chemical energy in every chemical change. Chemical change can be awesome. Or it can happen silently as an apple turns brown. Years pass before a rotting log disappears into the soil. Or a chemical change can happen in an instant. Chemical change happens all around us. What is chemical change? Right away, that gets us down to thinking about atoms and molecules. Here is a water molecule, one oxygen and two hydrogen atoms. With an input of energy, the molecule will vibrate more rapidly, breaking the bond holding them together, a chemical change. Or the atoms can combine, another chemical change. They can break apart and combine with different atoms to make different substances. Here, the oxygen atoms combine with iron atoms to form iron oxide. Iron oxide. Rust. A chemical change. When something burns, you can always be sure there is a chemical change. Part of the molecules here are turning to gas. And what is left is a very different substance. Many changes aren't chemical changes, however. What about this? A solid seems to have changed to a liquid. What do you think? Has there been a chemical change? No. Actually, this is tomato chopped up in little pieces. It still tastes just like tomato. Here's another example. What about when you dissolve salt in water? Has the salt changed chemically? No, the molecules of salt dissolve in the water, but they're still salt molecules. Well, actually, the atoms in the molecules do break apart. But since nothing has changed chemically, it's quite easy to get them back. Here's a way to do it. If you evaporate the water, the atoms can come back together, forming salt crystals again. Salt. This was not a chemical change. The crystals of salt simply dissolved in the water. And the chopped up tomato was not a chemical change either. It was a physical change. Here's another experiment that's easy to do in any kitchen. You take some vinegar and put in some baking soda. Is that a physical or a chemical change that happened there? I think it's a chemical change. Yeah, the baking soda has disappeared in the vinegar and gas bubbles came out. Something new has been formed. That's right. Now, whenever there's a chemical change, there's an exchange of energy. Why don't you do the experiment again and see if the solution changes temperature? Okay, we're pouring in the vinegar. Half cup. Let's see. And the powder here. About 79 baking soda. What do you make of that? Well, I guess if the temperature goes down, 
That means it must take energy to make it happen. Correct. Some kinds of changes take heat in, like this one. But try this experiment. Take some steel wool, which is mostly iron, and get it wet. Put it in a thermos. Use a rubber stopper with a hole in it through which you can put a thermometer. This is a speeded up picture. It actually took 15 minutes for the temperature to rise 2 degrees. What would you say is happening here? This must be a chemical change where he is given off. That's right. There are many kinds of chemical changes where heat is given off. The most obvious is burning. Happy birthday. On the other hand, very often heat is needed to cause a chemical change. For instance, sugar can sit on the shelf for years without any change. But if you heat sugar, things really happen to it fast. Watch this. Something like this happens when they make caramel candy. Many very complicated chemical changes happen in cooking when foods are heated. Necklet? Yeah, I'm done with this now. I think I'll put them in the oven. All foods are combinations of chemicals. Heat changes the combinations of atoms. Be careful, Nina. These are very hot. What kinds of changes can you see? Well, the muffins are brown and they're bigger. Do you think that chemical changes happened in the oven? Sure, for one thing. There's baking soda in the mix. Maybe a gas comes from the soda. The little levels of gas make the muffins rise. That's right. Part of what happens when molecules of baking soda are heated is that a carbon and two oxygen atoms break loose as carbon dioxide, leaving the other atoms of sodium, oxygen, and hydrogen. Carbon dioxide is a gas which breaks away fairly easily. It takes energy, but not a great deal, because these atoms are loosely bonded. The atoms in water, by comparison, are tightly bonded. It takes far more energy to break them apart. Another molecule that's even more tightly bonded is iron oxide. To make iron, the oxygen atoms must be separated from the iron atoms. And that takes a lot of energy. Intense heat causes very rapid vibration, which breaks the strong chemical bonds, leaving the iron. The opposite process, turning iron and oxygen back into iron oxide, rust, happens easily. If iron is left lying around, it rusts when it gets damp. When oxygen atoms join iron atoms, you would expect that energy is given off. It is. We saw it happen in the experiment with the wet steel wool. When oxygen atoms combine with other atoms, it's called oxidation. Rusting is just a nuisance, but other kinds of oxidation are so important that without them, we would have no civilization. When something burns, it combines with oxygen. The candle is able to burn because it gets oxygen from the air. No oxygen, no burning. The candle goes out because oxidation has stopped. If a fuel is given more air, and therefore more oxygen, it burns even faster. A glass blower needs a very hot flame.
if the oxygen valve is closed off, the flame is much less hot because it gets oxygen only after it leaves the burner. Turn the oxygen back on, the flame becomes intensely hot. Jet engines run by the rapid oxidation of kerosene jet fuel. Rapid oxidation of coal, oil, or gas provides the chemical energy to run power plants. Oxidation can happen so fast that the fuel burns up all at once. This is what we call an explosion. Explosions can be beautiful. They can also be destructive. Or they can be very useful, such as blasting away tons of rock in constructing a dam. The controlled explosions in an internal combustion engine are another way that we use chemical energy. In a gasoline engine, the carburetor mixes fuel with air to form a gasoline vapor. As the piston comes down, it pulls in the vapor, which is compressed on the upstroke. A spark causes a sudden release of chemical energy an explosion. Don't think that the action of chemical energy has to be rapid in order to be useful. A plant, perhaps the most wonderful chemical factory of all, stores its chemical energy slowly over many weeks. It takes in low energy materials, water, minerals, and carbon dioxide. With light energy from the sun, it creates new high energy chemicals, foods through photosynthesis. are also chemical factories. Eating begins the process of converting high energy fuel into heat and mechanical energy. You take in fuel and also breathe in oxygen at the same time so that the fuel can be oxidized. The oxygen and food molecules are delivered in the blood and blood cells to your body. The cells of your body are constantly combining oxygen atoms with food molecules to make new molecules. Chemical energy is released. Your body converts this to heat energy to keep you warm and mechanical energy to let you play ball. Aside from oxidation, there are countless kinds of chemical changes going on constantly in a rotting log or a cooking pan of muffins. And with each change, there is a transfer of chemical energy. In many ways, the most important transfer of chemical energy happens during oxidation. It's during oxidation that the enormous amounts of chemical energy are released that make our civilization possible. Explosive energy in the internal combustion engine. Energy in the turbine engine. The oxidation of fuels in factory production. In the burning of fuels that make electricity. In the fuels that we use to cook with. And not least important is the chemical energy from the slow oxidation that keeps us warm, that keeps us moving, that keeps us alive.